the good news is, even though the bolts are huge, um, they're not torqued down very much. I don't know, maybe 20 pounds. So you don't need a lot of leverage. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today I am doing something that I've waited for for a while, which is the install of the twin disc on my car. So a few weeks ago, I ended up taking a ride with one of my friends that was doing some logging on the com on the computer for the car's uh, idling issues. Um, did a quick second and third gear pull, and as soon as I started getting the boost on the second or third run, the clutch, the stock clutch in the car started slipping. So um, I figured that was gonna happen sometime soon, so which is why I ended up ordering these parts in advance. There are some parts that haven't gotten in yet, so we'll see how far I get with taking a uh, car apart, installing these. If the new parts don't come in by that time, we'll just put the car back together and do a quick break into the clutch. So just a quick review. Twin disc um, with the install tools, necessary bolts. I also have the the shim pack, which I'll show you guys how to shim if the if shimming is necessary, how to do it, how to measure for it. Got the speed bleeder, remote speed bleeder, slave cylinder, master cylinder. Um, I do want to take some time to acknowledge the fact that I actually did clean up the garage here, especially the pegboard, so you can see I have all the tools organized. Um, the most important thing in the garage, of course, is the anabolic drink. So if you're working on your car, make sure you're making an anabolic drink before you get started. Um, some of the parts that are missing though um, are a drive shaft. I ended up ordering a drive shaft from um, Henson Performance. It's the thousand horsepower drive shaft. Should be here probably sometime next week. I ended up getting some other parts from Tick Performance. The uh, drive shaft bushings and the bearings that are necessary to do this um, re, uh, reconstruction of the torque tube. I probably won't get to that this time around simply because if you've seen my other video I had a 6 liter LS that I tore down that I was going to do a swap on uh, for my LS1 however I found that there were some issues with it Watch the video, you'll see exactly what's going on with it. Long story short, I ended up taking the engine to the shop. Right now it's still in the shop. Uh, they're looking to see if they can actually salvage the block and install cam bearings in it uh, so I can do what I need to do to it. I figured this is the perfect time to install the clutch and break it in. So if you're doing this on your car, one thing to take into consideration is the clutch needs a break in period. Um, I, I don't know specifically for this clutch, but typically it's, roughly 500 miles and that's of just driving, heating the clutch up, engaging, disengaging. I'm not necessarily racing on the clutch uh, just so it uh, ends up breaking in properly. Um, what I do want to do is eventually use this clutch with the six liter, which is going to make more horsepower, which will require me to go to the, to the dyno. Um, in order to do that, the clutch has to be already broken in when I drop the engine in because presumably the car is not going to drive like it should. So I only want to take the dyno uh, and tuning once instead of having to do it two times for breaking the clutch and um, then for actually making boost and making some power with it. So the other part I do want to cover with you guys is I do have some exciting tools that I got. Uh, if you watch my video of the six liter unload and tear down, you'll know that I unloaded the engine and lifted it with a chain which was giant pain in the butt and not something i particularly like doing because it was a little um i don't know dicey the, the engine could could have dropped really at any moment so i ended up getting this plate uh for ls's i do have a truck that also has an ls well it's, a, it's got a 5.3 in it but nevertheless this would work on it as well so ended up uh, ordering one of these. I thought about making one. It looks fairly simple to make. Um, I can weld, but for 40 bucks, it's too much time, uh, too many materials to try to get to right now. Um, figured 40 bucks is is uh, well worth it for something I'll be using in the future. And then 
I ended up getting one of these. So I think it's like $43 for this and like 50, I don't know, five bucks for this. It is a harmonic balancer puller. Um, I ended up using a three claw puller uh, on my car. Just, I've always used a three claw puller. It, it's kind of, it's not the right tool for the right job. It'll do it. It's just, it's not, doesn't grip correctly on all, all the harmonic balancers. And it just, I ended up breaking one. Um, so I figured why not get one of these tools since I'll be doing this uh, for a while. So that's the update on the new tools for, I guess, December. Well, it's January 1st now, but I ended up getting these in December. So pretty exciting. So plans are we are going to lift the car up and start taking um, the rear wheels off, exhaust off, and start dropping the drivetrain. So I'll put you guys in a time lapse here so you can see that. And then I'll periodically stop the video to show you guys any issues I run into or FYIs. All right, so I just got done taking majority of the bolts from underneath the car that hold the drivetrain together. Uh, as far as I know, there's only four more uh, nuts holding the uh, back half of the drivetrain onto the car. I want to walk you guys through the order of operations for doing this job just to make it a little bit easier on you guys. But the first thing that you want to do is uh, before even, I guess you could raise the car first, doesn't really matter, but before you get dirty, first thing you need to do is need to get in here take apart this plastic piece and this plastic piece um, you'll have some 10 millimeter nuts here and here take this guy up slide it back make sure you disconnect um, this connector you'll have your traction control uh, module button console here take that up um, unplug it well, you'll have to do that to take out this plastic piece. So that'll be out of the way. Um, you'll also have to disconnect the, the uh, lighter. And then take out this plastic piece, which for me, it had a screw here, bolt here, and a bolt underneath the little grill looking thing that's right here. Once that's done, um, take off this boot and you're basically done inside the car. So once you have all that uh, taken care of, I highly recommend putting everything in a bag so it's nice and neat for you when you gotta go put it back together. Put your parts in the front seat so you don't lose them or break them. You're done inside the car. We come out to the outside, remove the wheels. Uh, the first thing that I did was 
Um, there's, I guess you could do this several different ways. This is the way that I did it. Um, the first thing that I did was I went ahead and disconnected these plastic pieces from your e-brake cable. By the way, you're going to have to disengage your e-brake. Disengage the e-brake. Um, disconnect these plastic pieces from the cable. Um, disconnect these two bolts here that hold on, that hold the bracket for the e-brake e cable. And then back here, it basically hooks on right here. So you're going to unhook it and then set it aside. You're gonna take this plastic clip here, you're gonna remove the cable from it, and then you're gonna take off this ground uh, from here. Just let it dangle. It comes out as part of the, um, the rear uh, differential subframe, whatever you wanna call it. And then jumping over to the caliper, um, the way I did it was, instead of taking off the entire caliper, I just took off the the half of it or the clamping part of it um, using these screws here. Um, I do have it secured with zip ties. Just so you guys can see this to this bracket that holds the that holds your, that holds your brake line. Do not secure it to any anything on here as this wall. Well, I guess you could secure it to this, but it kind of gets in the way. Um, uh, when you drop the subframe. So I went ahead and secured it off to the side. This part, this part will drop down and this will just stay dangling. Uh, you have two choices. You can disconnect the bolts here and then this arm will come down or you can do this guy here. Um, I opted to do this guy here. You can see, I can't really, but it is disconnected. I'll just remove this nut and then lift this entire end up, pop it out, swing it back, and it'll come down. Um, to get this loose, just FYI, uh, you're going to undo this nut all the way to the end. Don't take it all the way off. And then gently take a pry bar and pry using this part of the metal here and here. Do not damage the boot. Um, just pry up and lightly tap on this part here. As you do that, it'll pop down. Very, very simple. And then the last thing that I had to do is, now mind you, I do have coilovers. And if if I remember correctly, um, even the stock suspension still has a strut here. And it only gets held on by the one bolt. And then the leaf is underneath. And I don't think it'll impede anything. But basically what I had to do is I went ahead and took out this bolt. And my, my strut is just kind of hanging there and it'll stay there as I move it down. Now, it is at an angle, so as you, so it's at an angle like this, so as you drop the subframe down, you are gonna have to move it down a little bit so it doesn't scrape on other stuff here. I guess there's nothing really to scrape on, but anyway, the point is when you lower this entire subframe down, you're gonna have to go back and forth and watch to make sure nothing is done. Um, the other side, is the same can't really see it here but looks exactly the same the only difference is um, there is no ground up here it's just there is this the connector here that that connects right over here you're gonna have to disconnect it I'm sorry for the poor visibility, but if you look at the wiring harness, you'll know exactly what you have to disconnect. It's not really too complicated. Same concept over here. Disconnect the e-brake. Uh, I'm gonna disconnect it here. Took the strut off um, and I'll disconnect it. Disconnect the strut from the bottom down there instead of up here. Underneath the car, first thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna take off that cover um there's like i don't know 30 eight millimeter bolts here and it's kind of a pain in the butt to get to well not not to get to but to do so i highly recommend getting a power tool for that just be very very careful uh, that you don't strip any of the bolts and as i inch closer here let me see 
if I can get you guys better visibility. All right. So what you're looking at here, this is the torque tube. And this is where it connects to the, to the transmission. Bell housing. Give me a second here. All right. Torque tube, transmission bell housing. You're going to have five bolts. They are 13 mil. You're going to have one here, one here, one on the other side, symmetrical to this. And then you are going to have another one at like the 1 a.m. position and another one the other side at like 11 p.m. position. You're going to have to feel around for them. Um, this, this side here was worse because, I don't know if you can see that conduit, but that conduit's in the way. So basically the only way that I was able to get it was with, with this, with this flex joint, a 13 mil socket, obviously, and a three eighths ratchet. Um, the good news is even though the bolts are huge. Um, they're not torqued down very much. I don't know, maybe 20 pounds. So you don't need a lot of leverage. It's just very, very difficult to get to. So take your time. Uh, you're, it's going to feel like you can get this one with your hand. I couldn't. Just when I thought I could, I'd take the socket off, try it. You don't have enough leverage and trying to get the socket back on with this joint is a giant pain. So if you have it on, leave it on. And you're basically going to have to kind of position it. Here. The way you're going to have to position it is going to look something like this and then your hand is going to be over there guiding that socket making sure it doesn't uh, get out of line while you wrench down here. Um, over here I didn't have to use a uh, flex joint. I was able to get it um, with the with just a ratchet and a short socket, but it, it took took forever. So at this point in time, I believe the only thing left to do is disconnect this subframe here, here, and then those two points over there, symmetrical, I'm going to support the transmission and the diff here with a jack and uh, some wood. And I'm going to slowly drop it down and start uh, start disconnecting some of the wires that are on the back side here that are going to put tension on that conduit. And then eventually, once I get in, in a slight angle, I'm going to start pulling it out. Um, you don't want to angle it down too far. I don't know how true this is. I've, I've seen other... Uh, tutorials or DIYs where they say that if you if the top of the transmission goes breaks the line of the bottom of the car it could damage your, your firewall I'm not sure how true that is but what I do know is when you look at the torque tube the way it's lined up with the engine the more tension you put on it this way the more difficult it's going to be to pull it out so my, my thoughts are the less tension that I can put down this way, the easier it's going to come out. So I'm going to drop it just, just as far as I can to clear these bolts. And then I'm going to start uh, pushing back that way and see how it goes.